Hello, <laughs> it's been a while since I put anything out on this channel. Um, I'm sorry for that. I have recently moved house and I'm also extremely pregnant. <laughs> I'm in my third trimester now and I'm pretty tired as well as working as a vet nurse in the daytime part of the week. I'm also just sleeping a lot. So that's kind of the reason why I've been too busy to kind of film any tutorials. Um, but I do want to just say thank you to everyone that still watches my videos, um, any new people here, thanks for coming along. Um, I try and reply to all the comments that I get still, even though I'm not actually putting out videos. So if you have any questions or you like my videos, please don't sort of hesitate to comment even if I have a big gap between my videos. So Affinity Designer have just put out a brand new updated software. They're calling it Affinity Designer 2. Now I think the reason why they're doing this is because they're basically putting out as separate software to the normal Affinity. This basically means that yes, you do have to pay again. Now I know that's kind of annoying, but if you think about how much an Adobe subscription will cost you, this will still be way, way less as a, of an investment. So it's the same price as the original software. I think at the moment it's on offer, it's like 30 something, um, but they are doing a free trial. So if you're not sure you want to commit to buying the new one, then get the free trial, try the new tools and see for yourself whether you think it's worth the extra money. But again, it's like two months worth of an Adobe subscription. So in my opinion, it's still very much worth it. There are two tools that I think are brilliant for pattern designing. And I'm going to go through one of those tools today specifically. So a little while ago, I put out a, a specific video, which I called measuring lines and curves in Affinity Designer. Now I was very limited in what I could actually do when it came to measuring curves. So a lot of people did actually point out in the comments that that video was a little misleading, which I do kind of understand where they're coming from, but I was only just using the tools that were available to me. I didn't have a proper measuring tool. However, in this new Affinity Designer 2 update, they have finally listened to feedback and created a proper curve measuring tool. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in today's video and I might even delete the original video because I've actually had quite a few rude comments basically saying, well, one the other day told me I had no shame for posting the video, which I could find a little over the top because I was just showing you what I knew. Also as well, I find it funny how people come and attack me in these tutorials. I don't have to post these. Also, I've never said once that I am an expert at Affinity Designer. I've literally taught myself everything I know and I can't guarantee that everything I teach myself is going to be 100% right. So please take my tutorials with a pinch of salt. I mean, they help some people, they don't help others. But I've never really understood that mentality of searching for a video completely randomly, finding one, the video that you click on not suiting your needs and instead of just moving on and looking for something else, you post a rude comment. I will never, never understand that mentality. Anyway, I thought today's video would be great to kind of redo that video. So anyone saying that I'm misleading can hopefully just move on. And yeah, so I'll be showing you how to measure curves today. And that's basically an amazing tool for sewing patterns because you can measure necklines, you can measure armpit holes, any curves that you need to. If you need to make a sleeve or a facing to fit a specific curve, then this is your helpful handy tool. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, so yeah, that's it for today. It's gonna be a really quick one because it's super easy to do. Um, and hopefully in my next video, I can show you the other tool that I find really, really helpful on this new update. Um, so yeah, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in my next video. So I've opened up my project in Affinity Design 2 and I'm just going to show you how to measure a curve properly using the new area tool that is located down here. So basically the first thing you want to do is select the shape and click on the outline of your pattern piece. Then you want to come up to the node tool and you just want to split the curve away from the actual shape that you want to measure. I'll, show, I'll tell you the reason why I'm doing this in a second, but basically, so I've just highlighted these two. I'm gonna break this curve and then I'm going to click on the group again. Then I'm gonna come down here and come to the area tool and then I'm just gonna click on the whole shape and it's gonna turn blue. And then I'm going to hover over the curve and there you go, 12.9 centimetres. So basically it's giving you the length as if it 
were a straight line, does that make sense? So a lot more accurate than the way it could be done in the original Affinity Designer program, which is great. So they clearly listened to feedback that was being given by people because this tool has been available on Adobe software for a long time. So Affinity was greatly missing this feature. Um, but basically, if you didn't split this from the rest of the shape, it would give you like the whole length of the... So if, if you can see, when I sort of hover over this area, it's giving me the length of this line, this line, and this line, and I think even this part of the curve, because they're all joined together. So the best, most accurate way to do it is just to completely split the, the curve that you want to measure from the rest of it, um, and then you get an accurate sort of length that it gives you. So don't forget, you want to just click the node tool again, and highlight the two nodes that you want to add back to the shape and also select the other layer so the rest of basically the whole thing is highlighted and then you just want to join the curves and that will put it back together for you so there you go a really simple way of accurately measuring curves mm -hmm.